Hello everyone, welcome back to another video by Simply Learn. In this session, we will discuss an interesting topic that is exception handling in C++. So let's go ahead and have a look at what we will be covering today. So we will start with what are exceptions, then why do we need exception handling in C++ and what exception handling is. Then we will understand exception handling keywords that is try, catch and throw and we will understand each keyword in detail. So first we will start with what are exceptions. Exceptions are the unexpected events or the situations that arise during the smooth execution of the program. So there are times during the runtime when some errors or situations arises which create issues in the program. These issues are called exceptions. For example, let us suppose you want to divide two numbers, one is 7 and other one is 0. Now if we divide 7 with 0, it will show an error because we cannot divide any number by 0 because it is undefined. So exception handling provides a way to take care of problems like these. So now let's learn about exception handling but before that we must understand why we need exception handling. So why do we need exception handling in C++? One of its reason includes handling the exceptions that arise during the execution of the program. Along with that exception handling provides a mechanism through which we can handle the error generating part separately from the rest of the code. Exception handling provides information to the user about the problem so that he or she can detect the mistake and correct it. Now let's go ahead and understand what exception handling is. As we have discussed exception handling helps in dealing or handling the exceptions that disrupts the flow of execution of a program. So how does it deal with the exception? So when an exception is encountered, it transfers the control from one part of the program to the other known as handlers and makes the code more readable and maintainable and takes care of the exception by providing certain code. These exceptions are handled with the help of exception handling keywords. Now let's understand these exceptional handling keywords. So there are three exception handling keywords named try, catch and throw. As we can see in the example, first there is try block then followed by three catch blocks and each catch block contains the name of the exception. The try block can have more than one catch block. Inside the try block, those statements are enclosed which may cause the exception. Or we can say in this block, that particular code is kept which will throw the exception. Each try block is followed by one or more than one catch block. The try block throws an exception which is caught by the catch block. Taking care or handling the exception is the actual job of catch block. This block catches the exception thrown from the try block. Inside the catch block a message or some code is written to handle the exception. It can be a message for the user or a default code for a particular condition. Both the try block and catch block work together and every try block has at least one catch block for it. Now next is throw keyword. Whenever an exception is encountered, it helps in throwing the exception. It is used to throw an exception and its value to the consecutive exception handler. So as we have discussed this topic theoretically, now let's go ahead and do its practical implementation in our code editor that is VS Code. So this is our code editor. Here we will do an example in which we will make sure a person who is less than 24 years of age is not allowed to drink in the club. So we will create an exception in that part and with the help of try, catch and throw blocks we will handle those exceptions. Alright, so first of all we will create a new file and let's name it. as exception one dot cpp 
All right, now we'll start with the header files. That is hash include IO stream. Now the namespace standard. Now we'll start with the main function. And inside the main function, first of all, we will declare a variable named age. So we'll write int age equals to let's assign it as 20. So this person is 20 years of age. And now we will create the try block. So inside this try block, we'll write an if condition. That is, if the age of the person is greater than or equal to 24, then only he is allowed to drink. So inside this, we will print a message saying that you have the access to drink the alcohol. Alright. So after this, inside the else block all we need to do is to throw and the exception that is if the age of the person is not greater than 24 that is age is less than 24 so in that condition or in that situation we will throw the exception that is we will throw age to the catch block and for that we have to create the catch block. So the catch block will catch the exception that is age as you can see. Now inside this catch block first of all we will write a message. We will write, we will write you don't have the access to drink alcohol. You don't have Because your age is less than 24. Alright. So after this, after this message, we will print the age of the person. So we will write your age is so and so and then the variable age now after that we will write return 0 so in this example as you can see the person age is 20 as we have assigned and inside the try block we have set a condition that if the age of person is greater than 24 greater than or equal to 24 then he or she have the access to drink the alcohol and if not if his or her age is not greater than 24 then we'll throw the exception and the catch block will catch the exception and we'll print this message that you don't have the access to drink alcohol because your age is less than 24 and then his age will be printed so now let's try to run this i hope it works As you can see, you don't have the access to drink alcohol because your age is less than 24 and your age is 20. And now let's try to, if we assign, let's say 25. The program is working fine, but we want to check the other condition as well. Okay, so it is happening because we forgot to save this 25. As we have now saved it, now let's try to run this as you can see you have the access to drink alcohol because now our age is 25 so this is how exception handling works this try block inside this try block we kept those code or statements which will throw the exception and then it is thrown with the help of this throw keyword and then the catch block solves or prints a message 
in, with respect to that exception. So now let's do another example. So let's create a new file and name it, let's say, exception 2.cpp. Alright, so here we'll do an example in which we will try to divide a number by 0. And as we know that we cannot divide a number by 0, so it will throw an exception. So let's do this example. So first of all, our hash include iostream, the header file. Then the namespace standard. Now inside the main function, we will create three variables. Mean. So inside the main function, we will create three variables. One is for the numerator, then denominator, and then in which we will uh, store the output. That is the output variable. So let's name numerator as num and denominator as dnum because it is sounding familiar then we'll store the output in the output variable all right so we have created three variables num dnum and output now first of all here we will display a message to enter the numerator and denominators so we'll write please enter the numbers to do the division all right after that end l now we'll take the input c in num and c in dnum so the numerator and denominator we have taken the input from the user now after that we'll make the try block so inside this try block we will create an if condition and we'll write if dnum that is the denominator is equal to 0 if it is equal to 0 then we will throw the exception and the exception would be denum because denominator cannot be zero and if the denum is not zero then in else condition we will simply divide output equals to num divided by denum all right so now after this we have to create the catch block also because we have thrown the exception now we want the catch to catch the exception so we can write d for dnum here now we'll print a message saying that you cannot enter zero in the denominator so we'll write you cannot enter zero in denominator while doing the division operation all right now after that we'll use end l so this is our catch block after this catch block we will again write a message that the output of the division is that is if the denominator is not zero then we have to print that result so for that we will do this the output after the division is and here we will write the variable output so this will print the result of this one where the denominator is not zero so after that we can write return zero so there is one extra bracket as we can see of try block all right now it's done
we can save this one and let's try to run this but before running this one let's go through this code that first of all we have declared these three variables then we ask the user to enter the numerator and denominator so then we have used this try block and inside the try block we have set the condition that if denominator is zero then we will throw the exception and if it is not then we'll simply divide both of the numerator and denominator so the denominator which is thrown is caught by this catch block this and it will display a message that you cannot enter zero in the denominator while doing the division operation because it is undefined and if the denominator is not zero then it will simply print the message and the output so now let's try to run this So as we can see please enter the numbers to do the division so let's say the first number is 8 and second number is 0 that is denominator is 0 then you cannot enter 0 in the denominator while doing the division operation the output after division is 0 so it will show this output only and our output is correct now let's try to run this and do the simple division operation in which the denominator is not 0 so let's say now again we'll write 8 and the denominator would be 2 then as we can see the output after the division is 4 so our code is correct and our output is also correct so this is how we can do the exception handling and handle the exceptions using this try catch and throw blocks alright guys with that we have come to the end of this video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up I hope it really help you all Thanks for watching, stay safe and keep learning. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.